So is Snapchat the future of news? Well, the New York Times seems to think so. It published this article saying, quote, Snap has quietly become one of the world's most innovative and influential consumer technology companies and thus represents a departure from the filtered viral feeds that dominate much of the rest of the online news environment. CNET section editor Dan Ackerman joins us now to talk a bit more about this. Dan, what are you wearing there? I've got my Snapchat spectacles here. It's actually the one <laughs> set we have here at the office. We all have to share them. They look really cool. I mean, are they, do they have 3D vision as well? All right. It takes pictures and video and it puts it on your Snapchat. It's kind of like if a GoPro met Warby Parker. I, I like it. It's a good look on you. I would ask you. you, though, um, what is it about Snapchat's model that makes the social network such a leader in the space? It, it's so interesting because they really break a lot of the rules of what you think a social network has to have. It's very hard, for instance, to get something to be viral and to be passed around on Snapchat because it's hard to share posts and most posts disappear within 24 hours. So it encourages, I think, a type of authenticity. Uh, and it's also got a lot of little quirks and tips uh, and tricks with the app that you have to learn how to use. You can't just pick it up and get going right away. And I think that discourages older, older users. And that's why it has such a, a huge user base of people in their teens and in their 20s. Wow, and you're looking at the growth of revenue there as well. Snapchat has also created original news and content, and the news division is led by Peter Hamby. He's a former CNN embed. He followed the campaigns and made Snapchat videos for a mobile audience. So is Snapchat's innovative source of information for young folks giving them an edge over other social networks? I think it is where a lot of young people get news or get information these days because they can put together a lot of these different little short clips, photos, and videos, and they live for about a day, which is maybe what the news cycle should be on some of this stuff. It pushes back against the idea that if you post something online, even if your company created it, that it should live there forever. You can sort of like enjoy it for a day when, it, when it's relevant, and then it goes away, and I think that's really innovative. Twitter and Facebook, they're also a source of news for people, but is Snapchat what people are thinking of as a future? You know, I think anyone who's sort of uh, my age and in the news business is not really thinking that way, and maybe they should give it a second look. I think younger people uh, turn to it, but I think less for news right now, more for personal interaction. It feels like a much more personal social network than things like Twitter or Facebook do, which are so driven by algorithms and advertising and kind of data mining. Do you remember the days when Snapchat was just when high school students posted videos they didn't want their parents to know about? Of course, of course. And again, they disappear in, they in a disappear. day. And then you don't have to worry about it coming back in five years when you're on a job interview <laughs> because it, it vanished. Exactly. Well, you know, Snapchat recently filed their, for their IPO. How might their IPO stack up against companies like Twitter and Facebook? Yeah, apparently the valuation they're going for is something like $30 billion, which would be very large uh, compared to the last couple of years of, of tech IPOs. Uh, we go through you know, peaks and valleys in this where, where we have a lot of companies that do IPOs and then we pull back for a little while. If there's any company right now, though, that has that kind of buzz, it's definitely Snapchat. And do you think that Snapchat has an opportunity here to steal some momentum from Facebook and Twitter, especially after they've come under fire for these fake news stories? Yeah, because it, you know, it, it, it values authenticity, it values user engagement and interaction. It's much harder to game the system on Snapchat, and I think that young users in particular are going to grow to appreciate that, whereas, whereas they already think of Twitter and Facebook as sort of older people's networks, especially because we're all standing around talking about Donald Trump on Twitter all the time. It's sort of become the establishment.